Hey, what's up my friends? Welcome back to another Sprinkler Tech Tip video. I'm Sprinkler Nerd Andy, and today we're gonna take a look at the Hunter Wireless Rain Click Rain Sensor. This is a uh, super easy to install, very reliable and very effective uh, rain sensor. And um, I should mention that the Hunter, this Hunter Wireless Rain Click can be installed on any uh, irrigation control box that has a sensor input. So let's flip the camera over and take a look at the rain click. This is what it comes in. Very simple box from Hunter. And I've already opened it uh, before setting this up. So it is a little disorganized here, but let's take out the two pieces. You have the receiver device. This is the component that is mounted next to your irrigation controller. And then you have the sensor device. This is what is mounted in the landscape. And again, the instruction manual that no one ever looks at. <laughs> okay, so you've got your two devices and uh, what you'll see is the receiver has this uh, ruggedized rubber cover that you can uh, pull off. Again, this is really so that if this is mounted outside, this gives it some protection. If you're mounting the receiver indoors, you can just remove the cover entirely and then uh, this will be exposed. And this actually, you know, what I would recommend if, uh, if your controller is located in the garage, it's helpful to be able to see these indicator statuses um, at, at any moment when you're driving in and out of your garage. So again, this gets mounted next to the controller. And then this is the rain sensor that can be mounted you know, on a uh, fence post. It can be mounted on the eave. There's an additional gutter mount that will allow you to clip this on to the gutter. And I do wanna flip this back around so that you can get an even closer look at the device. Okay, and you'll see a couple indicator lights. The first one is sensor bypass, and then the other one is sensor status. The bypass is important because oftentimes the sensor could be tripped, um, meaning that the irrigation controller is suspended and it will not water. However, you may want to turn your sprinklers on. So if that's the case, you simply press the rain bypass button, and that will allow you to bypass the sensor and continue watering and then this the light below it which is the sensor status you can see it is either green or red pretty straightforward green means the sensor is dry and your sprinkler system is allowed to water if it's red it means the sensor is wet and it is currently being suspended so that's it your system is allowed to water or if it's wet it's not allowed to water um, you know, you probably saw there's just two mounting holes here. You can mount it to the drywall um, next to the controller. The cord is pretty long, so there's enough for you to, uh, you know, sort of feed the wire down up through the bottom of the controller. And then I do want to talk about these, uh, these wires here. Let me flip this back around because this is a common mistake. So what you'll see is you have these uh, two yellow wires and these are the 24 volt uh, power wires. They're labeled as such 24 volt right here with a little tag and then inside every controller, again, it doesn't have to be a Hunter controller. It could be a Rainbird or Toro. It could be a higher end controller like a baseline or a CalSense or a Rainmaster or a Sentinel. You'll find there'll be a 24 volt terminal and there's no polarity on these. The two yellow wires can go on either terminal. And then you have your two um, uh, sensor wires. There's actually three, but that's because, so you're always gonna use the white one. And then most controllers um, operate, uh, as we would say, in a normally closed position. And uh, what I mean by that is in the sensor terminal, there'll be a jumper wire. So the way this works is all the sensor is doing is interrupting a circuit. It's breaking contacts in that circuit. So if you look inside your irrigation controller and there's a jumper wire between uh, the two terminals, that means it's a normally closed uh, sensor. And so you'll want to use the white wire and I think the blue wire, you know, um, 
without taking a few minutes to look it up on Hunter's website. One wire is normally closed and the other wire is for older controllers that operated at a normally open. The good news is that the rain click can, can be used for both a normally open rain sensor port or a normally closed. You just pick either the blue wire or the brown wire to combine with the white to open and close that circuit. So that's how you wire it up. It could not be any easier. It will literally take you all of five minutes to hang this on the wall and wire it up to your controller. It may take you a little bit longer depending on where you want to mount the uh, receiver. If you want to put it up on a gutter, uh, you may have to get a, a larger ladder out. The critical or the most important part to mounting this, and we see it all the time. Gosh, whenever I'm traveling, I always see rain sensors. It's just what, it's just what the sprinkler nerd does, right? Looks for sprinkler parts. I can't tell you how many times I see these like under the bush or, you know, mounted in a place where rain is coming off the roof, literally falling onto the sensor. So it's important to mount this device where it's out and open to the sky so that if it is raining, this device is going to uh, sense the rain, you know, don't put it behind a building, behind a bush, even if it's not being covered, it could be just being blocked by something. So get this out into the open sky. That's why it's wireless. You can find a, an awesome place to hang it. Uh, the range is actually really good. I can't tell you specifically, but I think you can get 100 to 200 feet uh, wireless distance with this, just, you know, um, uh, without any obstructions. So one of the key benefits to this, to Hunter's sensor versus some of the others, is it has uh, what's called a like quick response, I think is what Hunter calls it. So even if it is, uh, it just starts raining, this can shut off immediately. Um, a lot of sensors have indicators like eighth of an inch, quarter of an inch, half an inch, etc., where it may take up to you know that set point of rain, eighth of an inch, let's say, or quarter of an inch before it takes any effect at all. So this quick response system will allow it to shut down really quickly. And then what you can do by turning this top piece, let's see if you can see that, boom, boom, boom. This is the, the dry out. So you can see um, just by turning the top, you're opening and closing this little window. Do you see that? And inside there, are cork discs so it's kind of interesting the wireless portion of the sensor might be new technology but the way these sensors work is uh really old technology there are synthetic i think now but maybe originally cork discs in here and when you look in this window um yeah you may not be able to see but they are just little cork discs and they're all stacked up on top of each other and when they get wet what does cork do or synthetic material? It starts to expand. And when that cork expands, it trips the, uh, the sensor. And that's all that's happening. So if you want these cork discs to dry out faster, you open the window all the way up. If you want to dry out more slowly, you close it up and then it will take less wind um, or take more wind, more heat, et cetera, for these things to dry out and for the sensor to um, allow it to water again. Let's see, one other thing I wanted to mention, it is important when you first install these and you power up the receiver uh, device and you've hung this, uh, or even before you hang it, I guess, at any time, what you wanna do is hold your finger on the top of that spindle. And again, that's forcing it into um, the, uh, the rain sensing mode, but it, what it will do is it'll pair it up to the receiver. So that's usually the first thing to do. Power up the receiver, hold your finger down on that spindle and pair the two devices. I will also mention that if for some reason this fails, you know, a bear climbs up on your house and just tears it down, you can buy a replacement transmitter and you can pair it with a new uh, or your existing receiver and vice versa. If your irrigation controller takes a surge and this fails for some reason, you can buy a new receiver and pair it to the transmitter. Uh, those are both sold individually and separately. Uh, and you can also just buy a whole brand new kit and just use one part or the other. And there's a, a pairing process if you read through Hunter's uh, manual, which I threw on the floor because nobody reads the manuals, but there is a way to sync them up together. So keep that in mind. That's actually one of the main reasons that we get returns 
um, is because they're either not paired out of the box for some reason, or somebody buys a replacement, they think it doesn't work because they didn't go through the pairing process correctly. Uh, and all of that's really sort of easily done. So just keep that in mind. Let's see what else. I just think, you know, for the, I don't know how much these are on our website right now, but they're less than $100 and it's a fantastic way to uh, save water on your system. Super easy to install. You can do it yourself. You don't need your professional contractor to do it. And uh, yeah, that's about it. So uh, feel free if you have any questions about uh, Hunter products, about this rain sensor, you can reach out to us. We're here for you by chat, email, and phone. And uh, until the next sprinkler tech tip happy sprinkling and we'll talk to you then